Over the last four months, we have been working at transforming this used to be screened in porch, starting with demo day, a new wall getting built, new windows, raising the floor, installing insulation, drywall, and more. It's been quite the process and we've been sharing every step of the transformation in each episode of this little room makeover series. Now in today's video, this room will be getting textured, painted, flooring and trim will get installed and we'll be adding a shiplap ceiling with a stained beam. So stay tuned because there's a lot happening in this episode and by the end of the video, this room will finally be completely finished. everyone so in today's video we are going to be working at hopefully completely finishing this room so yesterday Jalen textured the walls and the ceilings of this room and I will go ahead and show all of that footage right here before we get started with what we're going to be working on today which is to paint the walls and the ceiling hopefully Okay, so this was the day before when Jalen was going to texture the walls and the ceilings. So first off, before he could start, we had to tape and plastic the windows and the doorways and all of that, just preparing the room not only for texture, but also for paint the next day. And I always get a few questions about why we put texture on walls and ceilings. And here in Arizona, it's very common for ceilings and walls to have some type of texture, whether that's just a very light or flat type texture, or a very heavy texture. The texture he was doing in this room was like a light to medium flat type texture, which is also what we have throughout the rest of our house. just finished sanding the walls and so now we just have to dust them off a little bit and then we're going to get the paint ready and the paint sprayer and everything. So the color is a Sherwin-Williams color but we usually just buy it in the Volspar cans at Lowe's because it's cheaper and here you can see all of the info about that color and everything um, if you want to screenshot that or reference it if you're wanting to do this color as well. Originally, we thought that one gallon of paint plus the half gallon that we already had on hand was going to be enough to cover all the walls in this room. Once he started spraying that on the walls, we realized we weren't going to have quite enough. And once the can got down really low, the paint sprayer wasn't able to suck that paint out anymore because that little end on the hose has to be completely submerged under the paint. And so I took what little paint was left and brushed those little areas that were left on the walls that he wasn't able to spray. But I did end up having to get a second gallon of paint the next day just to finish up around the door um, and also around one of the windows.
even though it was 72 degrees outside, the boys really wanted to roast marshmallows for dessert after lunch, so we just took a couple minutes here to do that. It was really fun and just nice to sit and relax for a couple minutes before we got back to work. We decided to make this half of the ceiling a little more unique by adding this MDF shiplap instead of just doing drywall up here like we did on the other ceiling. This section of the ceiling after the beam slopes down a little bit so we decided to add the shiplap and then we'll be wrapping this beam in stained wood. Once all of the shiplap was installed, except for like the last couple of pieces of shiplap, Jalen did stuff the insulation in there and fully insulate the ceiling before putting on the last couple of pieces of shiplap. After that, the last thing that we got done that day was to tape and plastic the walls, and then Jalen sprayed the ceiling with a white ceiling paint. We let that sit overnight and that evening we did head out and watch the sunset, went for a little walk, went and visited some family, and then the next morning we will get back to work on this room. Okay, so it's the next morning and Jalen is removing all of the plastic and the tape and he is going to work at installing the lighting in here and also the plugs, the switches, all of that. And on this day, I was spending the day in Tucson, running some errands, had some appointments, went and visited a friend. So while I was in Tucson, I did stop at Lowe's and I grabbed all of the wood that we would need to wrap that beam in stained wood. Um, we didn't get it the last time we went to Lowe's because we weren't quite 100% sure if we were going to do the stained beam or not. It was going to be a little bit of an extra expense, a little more work, but now that it's finished, we're so glad that we ended up deciding to add the stained beam because it's such a statement in this room and turned out really awesome. So stay tuned to see that here in a couple of minutes. It's Friday morning and we were hoping to have the flooring and the trim installed by the end of this day and then we would have Saturday to work on the beam. Our goal was to get this room completely finished by the end of the week, which we did. We still had to finish up a couple of things on Monday and I still do have a little bit of touch-up paint and different things like that to work on over the next week. So this flooring that he's installing is the same flooring that we have throughout the rest of our house. 
It's a very affordable but yet very durable and good quality flooring. We got this from Lowe's. I'll show you a little peek at the box here in a little bit. That way you can screenshot it if you want to know the exact name and everything of this flooring. It's waterproof laminate flooring. I love the wide planks and the color and everything. They do have a couple of different colors of this exact flooring. But this color that we have throughout our house is called Valencia Oak and we've had it in our home for I think it's been about three years now and it's just held up really well. Would highly recommend if you're looking for a very affordable but yet good quality flooring. Now with this flooring you do have to add the underlayment first before you add the flooring. The flooring that we installed in the flip house was vinyl flooring and it also already had the underlayment attached to it which was super nice. He also didn't have to cut that with a chop saw. He could just cut it with his razor blade. We didn't have to put down any underlayment first, but it was a little bit more pricey that way. So it just depends on your budget. With this laminate flooring that you're seeing here, it is a little bit more work, but you do save quite a bit. This flooring is $1.69 a square foot. So we paid about $35 a box. So it came to, I think around $350 to put flooring in this room which was a pretty good price. So you can see each time that he needs to cut a piece of flooring, he has to measure, mark, walk it out to the chop saw, cut it, bring it back in, install it. So that's why that vinyl was so much nicer because he could just cut it with his razor blade right there. And if you're installing flooring in an entire house, that would definitely be a lot easier than cutting them all on the chop saw. But it wasn't too bad for this room because his chop saw was just right outside the door. And some of these pieces he didn't have to cut but he was trying to go in somewhat of a pattern and follow the same pattern that we had in the rest of the house. And Levi was just loving this because he could finally run in this room and play in here. He was so excited when we finally let him come in here. Now that there was flooring down, he could run in and out of here from the inside of the house. And he loves this room because these windows are right at his height. So he can walk up to these, put his fingers on the window seal and look outside. So now that the flooring's installed, he is just installing this trim and doing caulking around the top. And then he also did fill in the nail holes with some wood putty and then I'll be coming back probably next week and taping off this trim and painting it with a semi-gloss trim and door paint. Saturday morning now and we are going to work at building this faux beam. If you want a detailed video of how Jalen builds these faux beams, I will link the video down below when we installed the beam in our living room. I kind of give you a more detailed walkthrough of the whole process in that video, so I'll link it down below. But I am going to show you a few clips here of him building this beam for the office. So once we glued the cracks, he just clamped the beam in several different spots, let that sit for a couple of hours until the glue was completely dry.
Once that glue was completely dry, Jalen sanded the entire beam and then I applied Minwax Stainable Wood Filler to this joint in the center of the beam. And it's important to use a stainable wood filler if you're doing a wood project that you're going to be staining and you have to use a wood filler on it be sure that it is a stainable wood filler. And now Jalen is beating up the entire beam a little bit with a chain, and then he also used a hammer and a screw, different things like that, just to give it character and help it to look a little bit more rustic. He did also take a screwdriver and he ran the flat part of that, like the rounded part of the screwdriver, along the edges of this beam just to close up those gaps. So now it's time to stain. The first step is to apply a pre-stain wood conditioner. I always use this one from Minwax. Just brush that on with a brush to the entire beam. Let it dry for about 10 to 15 minutes. And then I'm going to apply the stain and I'm using our favorite stain, Special Walnut from Minwax. I just applied one coat of that with a rag and then once that was completely dry, I applied a sealer to this beam and I like to use a clear water-based flat polycrylic sealer. This was our first attempt to try and install this beam. On this first attempt, we realized that we were going to have to trim a little bit off of the right side to get it to fit, and so we had to bring it back down, take it outside. He trimmed a little bit off the one end, and now it's our second attempt at trying to install this beam, and we realized that we are going to have to cut an inch off of the entire back side of this beam because we forgot that the ceiling is about an inch lower on this back side than the other side. So we took it back down, took it outside. He had to measure, mark, cut an inch off of the back. And now it is the third attempt at trying to install this beam. And third time was the charm. It fit perfect and he got it all nailed in and it looked amazing. So now you are going to get to see the before and the afters of this room. It is really crazy to look back at the befores and to look back at all of the work that has been done to turn this used to be screened in porch into this extra square footage and office onto our home. Okay, so the office is complete. This renovation has finally come to an end, except this drywall still has to be completed out here in the dining room. But we're having a contractor come and do that just because he's really good at matching texture. So he'll be able to match the texture here in the dining room perfectly. But other than that, and the doors that are going to go here, which will install those doors when we decorate and furnish this room, hopefully in like a month or so. I put this rug and desk in here just for fun. They're obviously too small for the space. I'm gonna have to do a larger rug and a larger desk. But I'm just trying to start to get an idea of what type of furniture I'll be putting in here and how I'll be decorating, how big of a rug I'll need. Just realizing this floor has a nice squeak right here. Um, but along this back wall, we'll be doing bookshelves wall to wall and floor to ceiling. But you guys will see that in the video where we decorate and furnish this room. There still is some touch up things to do in this room. Like I still have to paint the trim around the door and just little touch up things here and there that you can't really see in the video, but I'll just work at that over the next week. We love how this beam turned out. It's such a statement in this room and was exactly what it needed. And it also ties into the beam that we have in the living room and just loving all of these windows. This is such a cozy, but yet bright and airy room. 
and we already love just hanging out in here and looking out the windows. We almost want to make this a second living room, but this is going to be a really awesome office space just to be able to sit here at this desk and look out these windows at the view. I can watch the kids play out in the backyard and it's just going to be really awesome. One thing that we kept saying as he was installing the floor is that we are so happy that we decided to raise this floor level up level with the house before it was down a couple inches lower than the rest of the house. And we almost left it like that, but we decided to raise it up and we're so happy that we did. It flows with the rest of the house so much better. We're also really happy that we decided to make this the doorway into the office. It just flows with the rest of the house and we haven't regretted this decision at all. We just really love having this as the doorway. If you remember previously, there used to be two doorways, the big sliding doors here, and then one single doorway here, and then also a window over here. So it has definitely been quite the transformation and it's been so fun taking you guys along on this journey. And I'm going to have to close this video with a voiceover because I did film a clip talking to the camera, closing out the video, but the mic wasn't working apparently. So I will just close it off right here. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed these last five episodes in this little makeover series of completely transforming this room. Thank you all so much for following along and your support, and I will see you next week on Tuesday with a new video. Bye!